friends. Good to see you. Hope you're having a happy day and um, I'm excited to share another book with you today. You might notice I have something next to me that we're going to use in a little bit, but right now we get to enjoy another story together. Now this story is about a bird and this bird is a parrot and you might know what parrots love to do is mimic, that means repeat, sounds they hear. So this parrot is named Harold, and Harold loves to repeat, but he gets tired of repeating the same sounds over and over and over. So he decides to go on an adventure, and he discovers something about himself that is kind of fun, and I bet you're gonna have fun listening to it too. So. Here's our cover. The title is Harold Finds a Voice. The author is Courtney Dickmas. This is Harold. Are you ready? I'm gonna show you the first page because it's pretty beautiful. These are all feathers. They're different colors. The cover page says Harold Finds a Voice. Deep in the heart of Paris, which is a city in Europe, in apartment 4B, there lived a very clever parrot. His name was Harold. Harold was a gifted bird. That means he was talented. He could hear any sound just once and copy it perfectly. Ring, ring, said the alarm clock. Burble, 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 said the teapot. Goal for the soccer game. Wee went the blender. Frizz, 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 went the telephone. Ding, went the toaster. Harold could make all those noises. When Harold heard something beautiful, he simply couldn't resist the urge to repeat it. He had to do it. The vacuum said, vroom, so Harold said, vroom, but he loved the sound of water most. Shh, went the shower. Flush, went the toilet. Whoosh, 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 went the clothes washer. But there was only one problem. Harold was tired of repeating the same old noises. Hello. 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 He often wondered what other sounds were out there. And he's looking out on the Eiffel Tower in Paris, France. Early one morning, Harold saw a chance to find out and took it. Zzz. It looks like the woman that maybe is his owner in the apartment. She's asleep. <gasps> Harold couldn't believe his ears. The world was full of beautiful sounds. Everything had its own voice. Flap, flip, flip, flap, went the laundry. Chop, 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 went the helicopter. Vroom, went the airplane. Beep, beep, wee-oo, wee-oo. Ding, went the bike. Honk, beep, beep, went the traffic. There were big voices. Ooh. The big ship. And small ones. Shroop, went the snail. There were cheerful voices, plunka, plunka, plunk, plunka, plunka, and sad voices. Ooh, doo, doo, ooh, doo. That looks like maybe the cello that he's playing. Even soulful, sniffly voices. The dog is sm smelling Harold. <laughs> it seemed that everything in the world had its own voice, except Harold. 
I must have my own voice, he thought. It's got to be in there somewhere. It's now or never, he decided. He took a deep breath and... Whack! That was a big voice. What was that? What a horrible noise! Then something wonderful happened. Flap, rock, flip, flap, flip, flap, rock, rock. What a great voice, squawked the other parrots. We heard you from miles away. That afternoon, Harold's new friends listened to all the voices he could make. They wanted to hear more and more and more. When it was time for dinner, Harold invited them back home. Harold taught his friends to make all the voices from apartment 4B. Of course, Harold was still the best alarm clock. He made the best tea kettle noise. He was easily the best washing machine and he was the best shower. They're all saying, shh, ring, ring, hello, ding, flush, go, whoosh, whoosh, fiss, fiss, wee, burble. That's all the noises he taught them. But Harold still said, rock. His own voice made him the happiest of all. Isn't Harold fun? He's a good teacher too. So I thought it would be fun if we took Harold and maybe made him come to life in our own artwork. So hopefully if you want to draw with me today, you've gotten a paper, you're going to need a marker, and today I have some special art tools. Paint brushes, a paper towel, some different colored paints, you can have whatever colors you'd like, a cup of water to rinse my brush, and a sponge in case we spill. If you don't have paints or you're not able to use them right now, you can use markers or crayons or chalk or torn paper. There are lots of ideas that you can use, but I'm going to use paint today. We are going to choose a picture of Harold that looks pretty happy to me. That's when he found his voice. So we are going to use this picture of Harold as our inspiration. Now, the good part about an inspiration is it doesn't have to look exactly the same. It's what inspires us, what makes us think, to do our own artwork. So, I might use this picture as inspiration, but my bird might not look the same as Harold. I'm going to try it and see. So, if your bird doesn't look exactly like Harold, that's okay. If it looks similar, you could name him Harold or you could name her Sally, or you could name her Beatrix, or Henry. There are lots of names, and you can name your bird when we're done too. So, if you have your paper and your art supplies, let's get started. If you don't, pause the video, go get them, and come back, and let's get started. So, when we do a drawing together, it's kind of fun to look at the shapes to go step by step. The first shape I see are his two circle eyes, and they're kind of at the top of the page, so I'm going to start with those. Two circle eyes, one, two. And inside each of those eyes is a dot to show his pupil where he sees. One dot, two dot. Does it look like Harold yet? Not quite yet. The next thing I see is the red paint around his head. Now, I'm not going to use my paint till I'm all done with my marker, so I'm just going to draw a line around to show his head. This way, this way, and this way. It's starting to look like a head. Now, in between his eyes are, is his beak. And I see a few different lines to represent his beak. The first one looks like a long M. Let's see. 
See how it looks like a long M? And on the bottom, it looks like a big U. So I'm going to draw a big U. Now, the big U has another U under it to make the beak shape. And the M has an arch or an upside down U on top. That's his head. When we color it in, it will come to life and be exciting. I also see his tongue, so I'll remember when we're painting to put his tongue back in. Let's focus on his body next. It looks like he has two curved lines on each side. And with the two curved lines, he has two wings. The first one starts at his shoulder and goes up and back, all the way down, up and back, all the way down, up and back. And my last one, up and back. That's his first wing. Now his second one is kind of slanted down. So I'll try to mimic that. Ready? Up and back, up and back, up and back. How'd your wings turn out? Are you happy? I'm happy with mine. I'm excited to add paint to them in a little bit. Now at the bottom of his body, there's two feet, legs that look like his claws. So I'm going to do one, two, and then a U up and one, two, like that. He has a couple of tail feathers. Should we add those in? Just two loops, one loop, two loops. I think we've done all the outline we need to do. Let's put our cap on and now we get to paint. Now, I'm excited if you would like to make Harold any colors that are interesting and you like, go for it. I'm going to copy the book because that seems fun so it can look like Harold. I'm going to start with my small paintbrush in the red paint. And I'm going to make some bumpy lines all around his head. I'm tapping my paintbrush all around. You can do it too in whatever color you'd like. You could color his head in, you could do zigzags, you could do whatever you'd like. When you're the artist of your own paper, you are in charge of what it looks like. That's going to be his head. Now, while I have red on my brush, I'm going to paint one of his tail feathers. And you might notice, which is kind of cool, the artist has drawn a black line, but the paint does not stay in the lines, which is kind of nice. It means you can make it just how you'd like. And there are no mistakes. If it gets out of the lines, that just means you're being creative. Hmm, the next one is yellow. I'm going to paint his other tail feather yellow. And it looks like he has some dots of yellow here, but I'm going to use my bigger brush for that. Let's paint his wings. They're green and blue. I think I'll start with green. In this part, I'm just going to paint them where I feel like green should go. Whatever you feel is okay. Art is so wonderful and open-ended that it can look like whatever your imagination would like it to. There are no wrong moves in art. No wrong colors, no wrong ideas. I think it's coming together. It's looking good. So I'm going to add some blue 
onto his wings and then we'll work on his body. You might notice how the author used different brush strokes with different colors to mimic feathers. So we might do that too. I'm going to add some blue here, some blue there, down here, this corner, maybe there and there. His wings are coming to life. Now my last thing while I use my small brush is I'm going to get some orange, kind of a pinky orange. I'm going to color in his beak. Remember in between the M and the U, that's representing his beak. And lastly, his little tongue in the middle is saying rock. Because parrots make some funny sounds. Now I'm ready for my big paintbrush. I'm going to start with, let's see, yellow. Yellow, yellow paint. And I'm just going to place my brush down and pull. Down, pull. Down, pull. Down, pull. The author made brush strokes like that to mimic the feathers rinse. My water is turning interesting colors. I forget to wash that when I'm all done. I'm going to use some orange. Touch, pull, touch, pull, touch, pull, touch, pull. Feathers are coming all around his body. Hmm. I see a blue one that's making me happy. Let's do a blue one right on his tummy. Touch, pull. Maybe another one on his shoulder. Touch, pull. Mm, one more by his foot. Good. Mm, there's even a purple one. That's a new color we haven't used. I'm going to do a little purple one right here. Touch, pull. Lastly, Let's do some red feathers. Let's fill the rest of our space. Touch, pull. One on his foot. There's Harold. Pretty fun, huh? You know what I noticed that the author and illustrator did Courtney on the bottom was she did some blue on the bottom. I think that's to represent that he's jumping up and there's a shadow on the floor beneath him. Should we do that too? I'm going to take a little bit of blue, just a little bit, and do some squiggly circles. Ready? That's his shadow from him jumping up because he's so excited that he found his voice. Should we write it? Remember what he says? Rock. What a fun sound. There's Mr. Harold. Did you guys have fun? If yours does not look like mine, that's amazing. I'm so glad that yours looks like you and something you did. That was pretty fun. Harold's pretty excited. Now, when you do your own artwork, I hope you find your voice for the artist that you are. We'll see you next time, friends. Thanks for playing.